What's up guys, Nether Void here with more War Thunder for you, and this is the game I was talking about in my last game, where I said the P40 was pretty much sucky for me. Uh, I'm going to show you how, it, at least unupgraded, I cannot get this thing to aim correctly. So I've got the girl on the wing, the pinup uh, pin doll on the wing, and I think that's going to be my signature from now on. I was putting on my landing gear there because I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to cap the base real quick. I'm going to cap the airfield. Then I realized about halfway down, uh, it's a single airfield map, so that would probably be a bad idea. I usually don't get these because now I don't fly reserves or, or low ranks anymore too much. And so I usually um, am flying the higher ranks, like rank 6 or 5 or something, which doesn't, apparently don't they don't see this map. This, uh, map. Anyway... The plane flies just fine. When you're trying to maneuver and stuff, it's it's fine. It's just when I'm trying to keep a guy on target, the plane flops around a lot, and I can't keep my gun on the enemy, and you'll see that in a second here. Just kind of looking for a target here. I like to drop on people and bounce people, and I, I like calling it drop on people. I think the term is bounce, like bounce someone, but I like it calling it dropping on someone because that's technically what I'm doing. I'm dropping on someone's face, so... Not seeing any good targets yet. Massive fur ball in there. Do not want to dive in on that. F2A looking fairly choice here. A little far away. Not further than anybody else. Here's a P40. So I'm trying to come in here. And look at that. It just the nose is everywhere. Why why it won't dive, I have no idea. So I'm diving in and I'm trying to trying to turn the plane here. It's just not working out. Just all it needs to do. I think the instructor's messed up. It should just add more rudder right there. <laughs> it's funny when you get in those inverted uh, situations and the instructor keeps you there. I think that's hilarious. So here's a P40. See how the nose is all over the place? That is just not good. Now, if he's flying straight, I'm fine. I can't believe I didn't get a critical there. That's kind of interesting. But Now, turning is also okay, although the wing's out now, so this plane's pretty much dead. There's a buffalo, and that's the plane I'm about to show you how beastly it is because it is just so much better than the P-40. We're ahead of the enemy. Now, I know the original P-40s were actually pretty bad. They were rushed to the front lines um, to fill a hole in what the U.S. felt they had in their Air Force. Or the, it was really the Army Air Force at that point. There was no U.S. Air Force yet. And here again, I'm flying inverted with a broken wing. Boom, I'm dead. So, that plane is down. Let's get the Kai-61. Oh, no, I'm going to go for the Buffalo straight off. That's right. F2A-3 here. This plane is very maneuverable. It's pretty awesome. Um, you're going you're gonna to see this game. I think it, it, I really think the problem with the P-40 might be in the instructor and not necessarily in the plane itself. Because the instructor, I feel like, acts really odd. Even though the plane... The, a plane can be very... In, uh, crap on maneuverability like the uh, H112 series HE112 those planes are very unmaneuverable but when I aim on somebody the instructor it does very good job at you know working the rudder for me and 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 the ailerons when I'm doing mouse aiming um, but as you'll see in this in this plane it's it has a good I think it has a good instructor I just think the P40 doesn't have a very good instructor so fury that's a reserve plane should be an easy kill. He's going to turn. Sometimes I don't shoot right away because they'll do that turn and I'll miss all my shots and have to reload. So, very maneuverable playing this Buffalo and also at high speeds. You can see him all, still over 370 right here. I thought that was kind of interesting too. You can see the uh, little glass panels in the bottom so that they can see what, what they're looking at in the gra at the ground there. A couple of hits on the Nimrod. Not a great game so far. Let's stay on this guy's tail. These... These uh, reserve planes do fall apart quite quick, quickly, even when you're on their tail. So critical hit there. His wing is out. It's obvious from the uh, what you're seeing here. Looks like an, an ally is also shooting him, but I get the kill, which should be expect expected. I never actually stop shooting at that guy, so I should get the kill. So he's down. Machine guns are coming back in. One thing I do like about get, uh, planes with tons of machine guns and no cannons is the machine guns uh, reload very quickly. So P26, P shooter coming at me. Doesn't want to ram, which is good because I don't want to ram either. No fun for anybody. Using the elevator here to turn very sharply or try to turn sharply. Nice loop on this guy. 
So, kind of what I want to... Oh, nice. Hit the pilot. At least it looks like it hit the pilot. Apparently, I don't know. Maybe he just fell apart. I didn't get any pilot indicator there. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was a little bit more about the economy. Just that somebody made a post today, which I think I, I alluded to this in my last... In my previous game. Um, where it didn't seem like assault aircraft got any bonus for land targets destroyed. They're pretty much considered fighters in that regard. So... If they don't, if they weren't bumped up like the bombers were, and they're getting like this guy was saying, 250 lions for a heavy tank kill. I mean, basically they might as well just be fighters. Basically, what War, War Thunder is saying is, or Gaijin is saying is, you're a fighter, but he's like the dude, the guy's like, uh, but dude, I'm an attacker. So how does that work? I'm a fighter bomber because he was in a P uh, P47, I think, Thunderbolt. And he's like, look, I'm an attacker. I, I, I serve both roles, so shouldn't I also, you know, what's up with me? And I said, you know, yeah, that, that guy should get a bonus. Like, if the bombers got plus 50% plus to land targets, it seems kind of obvious to me that, that uh, attackers should get plus 25%. You know, half their role is bombing targets. The other half is, you know, in the air. So, bam, nice. Killed that guy right in the face. Dude, this, this plane is a beast. The funny, the thing I think is odd about this is this is a rank two, and it's outperforming a rank four. An out, a rank four should be able to beat this plane. I, I mean, I don't. If buffaloes were better in real life than the P40, why didn't they just use buffaloes? Well, that, oh, nice hit on that guy too. And I think, and that is because, oh, okay, I just critted the guy in the face. So. I think the reason was there's a lot of stuff in real life that's just not uh, reflected in this game. You know, like cruising altitudes, um, different things like that. Because I know the P-40, I was reading about it a couple weeks ago, probably about a month ago now. Well, not a month ago, but I was reading about it on the Wiki Wikipedia, which is the source of all information uh, known to man, which, by the way. And uh, the best source you can you can get. That was sar uh, sarcasm, guys. Uh, anyway... It looks like a fuel leak or something. Anyway, uh, so they were saying is that those the P-40s had a real hard time at altitude because the Allison engine was just not very good, um, which is the same thing that happened to the Mustang uh, when it was first introduced because they used the Allison engine in the Mustang as well, and it had it had no cruising altitude, so the Mustang started out as a fighter bomber uh, just because it couldn't play. You know, with the big boys, the BF 109s in the skies, so it was regulated to to uh, fighter bomber status, um, and that's why the P 40 historically was not a very good plane. It was great on the ground, on the deck, it was awesome. Uh, it actually registered some air kills. It was mainly great at fighter bombing, though. But uh, and then the same thing with the Mustang. When they first got the Mustang, the U.S. Army was like, "Well, this is a piece of crap." This thing can't do anything, you know? The pilots are like, this is a horrible plane. Uh, I hate this plane. Um, you know, the Allies did not use it as fighter support or, you know, to, as a fighter. But once they switched out the engine, and I can't remember what engine they switched it out with, but once they did that, and it got climbing speed and got all these uh, advantages for having that bigger engine, it became, it really turned into a dominating fighter in World War II. Um... Again, that could be s somewhat U.S. Uh, propaganda stuff there. Um, I know that does happen in some cases, and I don't know a lot about everybody else's fighters. Um, but I think really what that taught the United States, at least, because as a U.S. Air Force guy, an ex-U.S. Air Force guy, I know this, is that uh, they really figured out in World War II that air superiority is, at least for, for modern warfare after uh, World War II and beyond, is the way to win a war. First, you need to establish um, air superiority, and then you can fly out your bombers without any hindrance and bomb the enemy repeatedly until he either gives up or you bombed all the strategic targets and your army just walks in. I mean, Desert Shield and Storm was a perfect example of this kind of doctrine. What they did, they flew in the stealth fighters, took out communications and all that crap, uh, took out a lot of uh, key strategic, and there it is again, inverted flight by the uh, instructor there. Took out a lot of the key key uh, military targets there in Iraq. Then they flew in the regular fighters, took out, you know, they hit a lot of the Air Force on the ground because they didn't see them coming. Uh, and then after that, the B-52s were unfettered. They just came right in and just bombed at will. 
They didn't need, you know, obviously they had fighter escort if they needed it, but they really didn't even need it because Iraq didn't have any fighters left. So they just bomb and bomb and bomb and bomb until the guys basically give up. And so that's kind of the same thing that happened in World War II toward the end there is we established air superiority um, and then we just bombed the hell out of them. I mean, uh, that's just the way it was. And, and the uh, Mustang really helped the Allies achieve that air superiority. It was... I think one of the first fighters that they said, tech, you know, quote unquote, this is an air superiority weapon. Uh, since that time, the U.S. has tried, has gone with that strategy of we need an air superiority weapon, and then after that, we're going to have our common fighter. Uh, that would be the second tier fighter, and then after that, you know, we have bombers and crap like that. So they have two tiers of fighter. They have the air superiority weapon, which is technically supposed to be the best fighter in the world. That would be the F-22 right now. At least for the for the U.S. Air Force, I'm not going to argue who has the best air superiority weapon. But what I'm saying is for the air for the U.S. Air Force, the best air superiority weapon is the F-22. Once they dominate the skies, uh, then they send in the Joint Strike Fighter and, and other uh, fighters, fighter bombers, fighter slash bombers like that to uh, do the rest of the combat for them, uh, take care of the rest of it, and then you know bombers can do whatever they want. So finally, I get knocked out after basically ruining the enemy pretty handily there and the buffalo is just an amazing plane especially in those dogfighting situations now i'm going to pick up the kai 61 which is a uh, a gold plane that i bought it's a tier uh, rank 4 american gold plane it looks a lot like an american plane in fact to me it looks a lot like an air cobra but it doesn't fly like well in some senses it flies like an air cobra so i got two deaths seven kills pretty nice game so far over 2000 xp but this thing has the same problem that the P-40 does. And I don't know if it's because it's using the same flight model, which it probably is. If the flight model is not built correctly, I would imagine the instructor would have a, have a problem keeping you uh, on target and helping you out if you're a mouse user, which I am. Um, we got Yaks now, Yak-7s. That's a rank 5. Hurricanes are out there. Lots of uh, reserve planes, though. So here I am just making a dive. You can't you can't tell much when you're doing a dive. But right here, see how I try to turn on this guy? It looks like it makes a turn with the rudder and then it uses ailerons. Or it's doing something. It's not doing it in sync. It's not syncing up the movement to keep me on target without wobbling my nose around. So here, I was thinking about going for the A20. No, I'm not going to go for him speed i'm doing all right but the buffalo actually seems like it has a better cruising speed too and keeps its speed better hurricane coming in on me right here and now i'm gonna get in a turn fight with this guy not a good idea against a hurricane in my opinion you're gonna see why in a second here plus look at how it wobbles all over the place that's crazy i don't know anyway that's the end of this game it's a pretty short game um lots of great action here Two deaths, seven kills, 2,000 experience. Really awesome game. Let me know what you think about air superiority, and especially for from Europe and other nations, I'd love to hear about it. Look at that premium bonus, though. This is before the little bonus, the boost to kills. Seven kills only got me not even 2,000 lions, silver. Uh, got on hand and fighter. Anyway, this is a great game. Let me know what you think. Later, guys. Oh, also, real quick, um, I will be doing a live stream today, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll also be playing a drinking game, so bring bring some beer. Um, it's it's going to be War, War Thunder and World of Tanks. So let me know. Later, guys.